what I want to do today is go through seven hormone disrupting chemicals that honestly we are all being affected in some way through household cleaners and many of the other items that I'm going to talk about but the good news is that we can actually remove these chemicals from our homes and our offices and replace them with non harmful products. Now, I'm going to share with you a nonprofit website in just a moment where you can actually look at the products you're currently using and see the rating they get in terms of toxicity. But what I want to let you know is that these chemical disruptors actually affect your testosterone levels. So in women, they can increase testosterone from inflammation, blood sugar dysregularity. In men, they can lower testosterone by actually converting more of it to estrogen. And in women, they can create something that's called estrogen dominance. That means normal or higher estrogen, but low progesterone. And that leads to symptoms of bloating and gas and low mood and brain fog and oily skin, adult acne, thinning of the hair, and so much more, as well as head headaches, migraines, etc., skin rashes. So I'm going to go through just seven here today. The good news is that there's always a one for one and they're, they're typically not more expensive. And that's the nice thing. It's just knowledge is always power, but knowledge implemented is the real power. So I'm going to give you that website right now. It's called ewg.org. And if you want to look at the one for cosmetics, which we'll be chatting about a little bit, that's skin deep, but it's still part of ewg.org, which stands for Environmental Working Group. Uh, really nice organization. They go through the Clean 15 and Dirty Dozen every year. And you can just type in most household products and you'll be able to see the toxicity score and what you may be affected by. All right. So so here's the issue. There are two ways that these chemicals are going to disrupt your hormones. There's an acute exposure to a high dose. That's a real problem, right? So if you go into like a really mold infested home, okay, that can you can fill up that rain barrel really quick. But then there's also chronic exposure. Most of us are exposed to the chronic exposure. It's a little bit every day. And then what happens is that gradually builds up in your body. And there's so many people out there who they just don't understand how detoxification works in the body. And they say there's no reason to ever do a, a functional medicine detox because your liver and your kidneys, they're always detoxing every day. Well, yes, they are. If they weren't, we wouldn't be here, right? But the problem is that these um, chemicals, which are oftentimes fat soluble, do not get processed by the liver fully or the kidneys. And what happens is they end up floating around your bloodstream, waiting for another pass through the liver, or they get stored in your adipose tissue, which is your body fat, or your brain, which is predominantly fat as well. So now you're storing these chemicals in your adipose tissue, your body fat, which then leads to what? Well, it leads to more inflammation, more cortisol, and more estrogen. And if you want to learn more about that triad, we'll call it, I'm going to actually link that up below here today. So all of the show notes for today's show will be at stephencabral.com slash 2818. And you don't need to worry about all the different websites, the nonprofits, et cetera. I'll link them up at stephencabral.com slash 2818. Okay, let's dive right in. The first chemical I believe you will have heard about before, and that's because a about a decade or so ago, yeah, about a decade or so, maybe just a little bit more, there's a product called bisphenol A. Bisphenol A or bisphenol A is, called, is also referred to as BPA. And this is basically from plastics. A lot of them, though, were from hard based plastics as well. Why these were such an issue is that people had all these plastic containers, Tupperware, sports bottles, etc. And they were putting them in the dishwasher. And these BPAs are actually activated by heat and light. So when you put them in your dishwasher, they get heated up. And when they get heated up, they start to release more BPA, bisphenol A. And the issue with this is that it can actually lead to learning disorders in children and adults, behavioral-based issues, mood issues, neurological issues, heart-based um, abnormalities like heart palpitations, and changes to our DNA, which is really scary, right? Because that's going to lead to then more inflammatory issues, more dis-ease of the body, um, as well as potentially, which is probably the worst part that nobody talks about, is actually then passing on these poor genetics to the next generation. 
really scary. And these things were around for decades before they were ever called out. Now we have to be careful because a lot of times we see the alternatives are BPA free. Be careful with BPA free. We just know that in another decade, these may be an issue as well. I'm not saying that you can't use any plastic. I get it. You know, plastic makes the world go round right now, right? But just don't heat it up. If you have a plastic sports bottle, wash it with soap and water. Don't put it in the dishwasher and get it heated up. And just be careful of all the plastic water bottles that you're drinking out of, because all, if, even if it's not hot right now, it very well and very may likely have been shipped in a very hot delivery-based truck or stored in a hot warehouse. All right, so that's the first one. The second one is flame retardants. Very few people ever know or think about that their mattress, their baby's mattress, children's mattresses, and their furniture can be sprayed and are heavily sprayed with flame retardants. Now they do this because legally they're most are required to. But second, they don't want to be held um, in a lawsuit if any of those things were to catch fire. Now I wouldn't say that it's their fault if a mattress was to catch fire or a sofa was to catch fire, but nevertheless, these are sprayed with flame retardants. Flame retardants are unbelievably toxic to both the brain and body, but also affect uh, they deplete glutathione, they affect the liver, they affect the thyroid, uh, and many other factors in the body like the kidneys as well. So you want to be careful with that. They can lead to cancer. Other, They're known carcinogenic, so they can cause cancer, um, infertility issues, immune issues, and every single one of these chemicals can affect neurological-based issues as well, as well as um, I always talk about infertility. All of these affect fertility as well because of what they do to your hormones. Okay, the next one is glyphosate, or let's just call it um, pesticides and herbicides. Okay, so pesticides and herbicides, we'll lump them together. And one kills weeds, one kills bugs, essentially, when you're, when you're growing foods. Now, the problem is, most foods, we have to think about it this way. It's like most foods are guilty until proven innocent now, which is sad, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to go by, there's a few different rules that you can look at. One is purchasing organic whenever possible. But the second is that washing your produce, your fruits, your vegetables. We bring all of our produce home. We try to buy always organic if we can. I know not everybody can. I get that. I'm going to share another tip in a moment. We have a big stainless steel bowl or a ceramic bowl. We fill that with a little bit of baking soda and water. And we basically wash all the produce. We let it soak there for 15, 20 minutes. You can use apple cider vinegar as well. And so this will allow you to clean a lot of those things. Another way that you can do it, you put that water there and put in an ozonator. And we can link up an ozonator as well at 2818. And what that will do, that extra oxygen molecule will help kill free radicals uh, and remove a lot of the chemicals on there. But the truth is that we don't want to be eating a lot of these pesticide and herbicide sprayed foods in the first place because many of them can't be washed off. They go right into the skin and flesh of the food itself. So my recommendation is you follow something called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. The Clean 15 are the top 15 products that if you can't purchase them organic, they're okay to purchase conventional. And the Dirty Dozen are the ones that you don't want to eat if you can't get organic. All right, so we can link up a podcast on that as well. All right, the next two are the PFAs. So these are the perfluoroalkyls and the polyfluoroalkyl substances. PFA is for short, much easier for me to say at least. And they're a group of chemicals that are used in stain and water resistant products, non-stick cook cookware, and some cosmetics. They've been shown to cause birth defects, harm the liver, lower fertility, suppress hormone production, and increase the risk of obesity and cancer. So, huge issue because these are invisible. You really don't see them. And if you have a non-stick pan right now, you can be like a Teflon or something like that. You can be exposed to these every time you cook if you're scraping that pan or you're heating that pan up. And over time, it's starting to get these microparticles into your food. We don't want that. Many cosmetics have these as well, and you don't even know. They don't feel different. You can't see them. They're microscopic. They can be in there. And the last is the you know water-resistant products. And believe it or not, a lot of our 
clothes can be, you know, these water resistant things that we're wearing. We need to be careful with all the, you know, wrinkle freeze and all, all those types that they're not exposing you to dangerous chemicals. So you want to watch out for that too. The last one I want to share with you is phthalates. Phthalates I've talked about before. I don't know if I've dedicated a whole show to it before, but one of the reasons why this is so important to look at is that we went away from like the hard plastic bottles right? Kind of before, if you think about the water bottles you used to carry around, they're, they're pretty solid. But now everything is like this flimsy uh, plastic that you can just crush, right? So that's nice because it fills up what? Less landfill and hopefully it's easier to recycle. Uh, and there's so many of these like super thin plastic bags, like using um, less product. There's vinyl products out there. And then there's all the things that are used as well with uh, medical-based tubing, sterile-based tubing, all that. And again, we need these things. So I'm not saying we don't. I'm not, I'm not saying that. It's impossible to carry around glass all the time. I'm, I'm not saying that that's always possible. But the problem is that these items can be leaking phthalate into the water or against your skin. So you can be actually using these and exposed to it through the dermal layer of the skin. So your skin is actually porous or semi-porous and it can start to absorb these particular issues. Phthalates can also be in synthetic-based fragrances and we can actually inhale them, breathe them in, or if they're on our body, we can absorb them again through the skin. Phthalates again affect our reproductive health, especially in women. They can cause uh, hormonal-based disruption, which we spoke about, affect the lungs, affect the liver, affect the kidneys, which are three main parts of detoxification. So I don't bring up any of these things to scare you. That's never the goal. But we also don't want to be like the you know crane that sticks its head in the sand or the ostrich that sticks its head in the sand. What we want to do is be aware, not be frightened, not be scared, but say, okay, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten rid of a bunch of these things. I no longer put the plastics, the Tupperware in the dishwasher. I hand wash those. Good. That's a great start. You've had a coach. It's five years old. Okay. Well, we're not going to worry about that as much, but when you purchase the new one, you'll look to see if it's sprayed with flame retardant, the pesticides and herbicides. You'll try to, put, uh, you'll try to go with organic. You'll wash your produce. If not, you'd follow the clean 15 and, and the dirty dozen, right? You're going to try to stay away from the chemical-based cosmetics and the non-stick cookware. Maybe you take your favorite pan that you use every day and that's the one that you replace first, right? And the last one with the phthalates is just saying, okay, is it possible for me to maybe bring my own water, carry water, get a glass bottle? Um, can I just watch for the amount of different fragrances and the, these unnatural scents that I may be exposed to? All of these things over time, they fill up our rain barrel. They lead to chronic exposure. They begin to break our body down. But the nice thing is we know how to detox, right? Our bodies know how to detox. They're doing it every day. The less we're exposed to, the less detoxing we have to do. But the truth is doing a functional medicine detox is absolutely paramount. I have a free course on how to complete one. You can just go to stephencabral.com slash courses. The detox one is free. I wanted to teach that. You can read the rain barrel effect. Um, that's just that book I pay for to print. You just pay for shipping. You can do things like sauna, which is incredibly helpful as well to sweat out a lot of these things. Hydrate your body on a daily basis. Get enough fiber to move these things through. All of those are some quick tips. And then you can also go to uh, EWG, look at the products that you're using right now, and then stephencabral.com slash resources. I've done a lot of the research for you. There's hundreds of companies there that I personally use with my family, my two daughters, my wife. These are things that I recommend in my private practice, and those are at stephencabral.com slash resources. So hopefully this was helpful. As always, feel free to share the show with anybody you believe it could serve, and do feel free to leave me any questions in the comments below. I try to get to as many as humanly possible, and I read every single one. Thanks so much, everybody and stay tuned because tomorrow I'm going to be talking about a specific type of intermittent fasting that I believe is the best out there and it's called circadian, circadian intermittent fasting. Stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.